Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thanks for coming on today. Uh, my name is Michael Lopesha, and today I will be presenting in the new residential category. Vishnu Heirloom is a family project, which, as the name suggests, is something of special value to be handed down from one generation to another. The project commenced in 2018 when I just registered as an architect in WA and was commissioned to design my first home for my parents. The site is located on the east coast of Tasmania in a small surf town uh, of Vishnu and is a vacant one hectare lot, mostly cleared with some protected coastal vegetation to the east. And the site benefits from direct coastal access. What my parents wanted was a home that reflected the values of the family and their lifestyle, living connected with the outdoors, um, celebrated rituals around fire and cooking over coals, and also a project that celebrated generational thinking. Jane Alpha. Uh, the program was to accommodate a family downsizer, <laughs> a downsizer in inverted commas there, with a private master suite where the couple can retreat to away from the noise and antics of the kids and the grandkids. Um, an open plan living space is central to the plan and brings everyone together when friends and family are visiting. Different outdoor spaces are celebrated with direct access from bedrooms, ensuite and living spaces. And the gable form drew inspiration from the Tasmanian rural context and was split to create a courtyard that provides light and privacy to the master suite. Three large gum trees were surveyed and the plan was wedged between them, ensuring no major vegetation was removed. Part of the brief called for an underground cellar, which drove the idea of embedding the home into the site um, and creating a protected courtyard that offered an alternative outdoor dining option. Materials were selected for their beauty, simplicity, and sustainability. A St. Helens rammed earth mix was used, keeping the embodied, embodied energy very low for a magic component of the walls. It was also engineered to form um, the retaining and the underground cellar walls. Shalsugibine, um, or charred timber, was selected for its beauty and longevity, and recycled tassie oak boards um, lined the floors throughout. And um, reclaimed ironbark wharf timbers came from Sydney and they were used for the expo exposed beams and trusses internally and the arbor in the courtyard. Uh, the home is connected to the electricity grid, um, but it's powered by a seven kilowatt solar um, system that's on the shed roof. And um, that just helps to offset the energy demand. Uh, Rainwater is collected in 70,000 litres stainless tanks and a septic system deals with waste. The shed was the first of the two buildings to go up and set the tone for the home, set the tone for the home to follow. In this case, we used silver top ash and that was actually charred by hand on site. A set of entry steps leads guests into the courtyard and unveils a rich material palette of round earth, charred timber, corten awnings and a timber arbor. The driveway peels around the south and forms the daily entrance for the guests or for the um the owners um four uh rather massive wharf timber trusses feature in the living room um, and the rammed earth blade ties the exterior with the interior the two guest bedrooms feature rammed earth and expressed floor joists and both have access to the outdoors the long axis of the home is held by the rammed earth wall and light filters in from the exterior spaces the morning coffee ritual is celebrated in the bay window of the master bedroom. The ensuite is intimate and connected with the outdoors. And a skylight over the shower creates an uplifting atmosphere. The family love of wine is celebrated in the cellar. A small sculpted aperture in the rammed earth is the only source of light and light plays at its best in the cellar. Fire is celebrated in the courtyard by way of rye the South African barbecue, and the covered deck is a place for the pizza oven. The easterly deck is a place to catch the morning sun 
and the westerly courtyard to catch the afternoon sun and importantly, get out of the wind. Vishnu Ulum is a project rich in feeling and fortunately for me as the architect is a place I can uh, visit regularly to understand the ramifications of design decisions. Many lessons unfolded as the home was built and is lived in and is a constant reminder of the potential for architecture to enhance lives. Thank you. Did you find um, it was your brother built it? Yep. And your parents were the client? Yep. So sometimes with projects that can feel a bit claustrophobic, did you find, how did you find that work? Uh, the main um, client driver was probably my mother. She's quite a force. So she drove a lot of the, I suppose, design discussions. Um, and then I understood the capabilities and the nature of my brother being a, somewhat of a craftsman. So I sort of let him bring some of the other elements to it. And I think during construction, there was probably more frustration than during the design process. So I think the, the design, lang uh, design conversation was... Um, pretty solid and fruitful, but the way that he built is um, like a craftsman. So I think it took ages. And, um, and the things that you talked about, like the, the things that they wouldn't understand, the qualities of the light, the qualities of the material, that that just, I'm thinking because my family would probably say we're not doing that. <laughs> uh, Did that happen for you? No, I think the family is pretty rich with kind of experiencing things. So they understood the potential of spaces to be great. And then it was, I think what I brought to it was just putting it all together in a way that kind of worked. Um, right. Yeah, so it was, didn't go over the top. I was um, curious and to follow on what Matt said, just about finding the skill set to do some of the more crafted elements in the house, especially in a regional area like Vishnu. Obviously, your brother and knowing his capabilities, but were there any difficulties with other, other trades or? Um, the ground earth is obviously a major part of the build and, and adds a lot of the quality and Tassie's only got two guys really that do round earth so we were kind of fortunate that they um, were pretty skilled in what they did but there were a few instances where this northern side for instance had to be rebuilt um, from about halfway up because it sort of lent over a little bit um, but then uh, other than that it all went pretty smoothly because I think my brother was doing a lot of the stuff that other trades would probably be doing. He sort of did everything pretty much. Yeah. Did you get on the tools as well? Uh, yeah, I did a little bit, yeah. Um, yeah, that sort of slab down day was pretty cool because it was, you know, multi-generational people involved. So mm. that was pretty special. Mm. Yeah. And then the landscaping was also done, which um, that just lifted it to the next level. It was um, Hobart Prize Loka landscapes. The decision with the timber coming from elsewhere, like, can you talk about that? I know it's like the round earth sort of quite local and... Yeah, so like I said, the first test case was the shed and they used silver top ash, which was kind of sourced, I think, maybe from uh, Melbourne or from Tassie, but the charring process uh, turned my brother off actually using that. So then it was trying to find someone that could supply something that was available and so it came from WA in the end and as a tried Jarrah. Yeah. So we had to go for a bushfire rated species and then it sort of limits your choices a little bit. What is it about rating then? Uh, it's Bell 19. Okay. Bigby, did you have any questions? Yep. Um, thanks for the presentation. Just a pragmatic question. Uh, thermal comfort during winter. Describe how that's met. Was it all all passive, or do you have some active systems involved? Uh, there's just a wood heater. Okay. Yeah, heats the space. Um, the family camps a lot, and we sort of um, they sleep with the doors open mostly. So it's um, yeah, there's no active systems uh, okay. apart from underfloor heating in the bathrooms just to dry the space yep. up. Okay. Thank you. Yep. I just asked Michael, was it easy to get your recycled timbers? Um, my brother's he's pretty crafty, my brother. Um, yeah, so he the, the main wharf timbers actually came from Sydney, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and how he got them, 
He's got his connections. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's pretty cool to be working with um, big pieces of timber like that and to be reusing something that was previously something else. Cool, thanks guys.